We said goodbye to family and friends on our extended stopover from Boston to Belize. And now we are on our way to Miami International Airport to continue our journey to Belize. There is a place on earth where you can walk in the sands of time. A place with a mystic past and an incredible future where both dolphins and humans play. An exotic land of beauty bathed in sunlight. Belize, where emerald green palms meet golden beaches stroked by sapphire seas. Bordered by Mexico to the north and Guatemala to the west and south, Belize is the only Central American country where English is the official language. It boasts mountains, a tropical rainforest, numerous waterfalls, and of course, the beautiful turquoise of the Caribbean Sea. And with a favorable exchange rate of one US dollar to two Belize dollars, the average vacationer and expat budget goes a long way. What Belizean adventure would be complete without trekking the many temples, pyramids, and city ruins of the ancient Mayan civilization strewn throughout the country? But go ahead. Have fun. Play nice in Belize. Back to Miami International Airport, returned the Chrysler, got our boarding passes, passed through security and TSA, now we have to find our gate. Found our gate, boarded, and now we're on our way. From Miami to Belize, our flight time will be a short one hour and 45 minutes at an altitude of 34,000 feet. But right at takeoff, we hear the captain announce this. Right now he's doing some further tests uh, down below. We should know something more here in about another five or ten minutes. And, uh, and we will go from there. Once again, I do appreciate your patience. The service. Unfortunately, I've been told that this flight is now canceled. So I'm not sure down the road. I am a pilot. I'm not a gate agent or reservation expert. So they're going to uh, take this thing to the hangar and work on it. And I'm going to ask you to, uh, unfortunately, deplane and take all your belongings with you. I do apologize for this inconvenience, and uh, I'm hoping we can get you on your way to Belize as soon and as uh, rapidly as safely as possible. Thanks. In our situation, American Airlines apologized, booked us a room in the Quarian Hotel right at the airport. It was noisy, and the place was falling apart around us. They also gave us $75 per meal and shuttle to and from the airport. The next morning at the airport, we had to do the whole procedure all over again. One hour, 47 minutes at an altitude of 38,000 feet. Belize weather conditions are partly cloudy with a temperature of 86 degrees Fahrenheit, A319 aircraft. The A319 has a 3,750 mile range and can carry up to 156 passengers, but it also has a price tag of $85.8 million. According to the onboard entertainment console, it says we should be over the shores of Belize. And there's the emerald green water of the Caribbean Sea. First welcome to Belize, where the local time is Frost Lakes 12.36. We are two hours behind Miami. Take a moment to check your seat back pocket for any personal items like tablets and cell phones. We picked up our Jeep from Crystal Auto Rental right at the Belize Airport, which is actually in Ladyville and it's nine miles from Belize City. We checked into our hotel at the Global Village Hotel. It's right at the airport, although it was uh, quite quiet there. And they didn't charge me for checking in a day late, so we had to modify our itinerary a little, but it was no problem with the rental company or the hotel.
Bright and early the next morning, we were on the road to Altun Ha. It's an ancient Mayan ruins about 25 miles north of our hotel. We were the first visitors to arrive that day, so we had the entire site to ourselves for a while. Before we left Maine, we did a lot of research on a few of the Mayan ruins in the country, so we're on our own here today. Uh, most people arrive with a tour group with a tour guide to explain the many temples and their usage. Altun Ha is the name given to the ruins of the ancient Mayan city in Belize. It's located in the Belize district about 30 miles north of Belize city and about 6 miles west of the shore of the Caribbean Sea. The site covers an area of about 5 square miles. <laughs> was occupied for many centuries from about BC 900 to AD 1000. Most of the information on Al Tun Ha comes from the classic period from about AD 400 to AD 900 when the city was at its largest. to the top is no easy task, but once you're up there, you get a magnificent view of the entire site. Welcome to Central America. Here's we have our first tour group of the day. Phyllis seems to have found herself an ornate box turtle. Our goal was to climb all the structures at the ruins. But once on the top, although a little dangerous, you get an idea of just how big the place actually is. And you can only imagine what took place here hundreds of years ago. The jungle that surrounds the ruins are totally impenetrable. Now I'm not sure if this is the Seba or the Kauai trees, but they are one massive structures and they are really solid. We thought we would take a walk down to the pond. It was on the far end of the site. The paths to the pond were really well maintained and it was an easy gentle walk all the way to the pond, approximately three minutes from the site. After a relaxing break at the pond and a safety meeting, we decided to make our way back up through the ruins again. What do you see? Other side. 
We've been here a few hours now and many tour groups are starting to arrive. Now, if, you, if you're going to climb this temple, the last 20 steps on this temple, you have to climb them like what the Mayans do, on your hands and on your knees. And, and of course you can't leave a tourist attraction without running into the souvenir shops. They are many in this area. And we did pick up a few artifacts here. I used to bite my tongue and hold my breath Scared to rock the boat and make a mess So I said quietly First thing I was able to do was to go beyond the no trespassing signs to a tapir cage. I let you push me past the breaking point. I stood for not a thing. So I fell for everything. Okay, Phyllis, stop playing with that panther and come over here and see this tapir. The Belize Zoo was started in 1983 as a last ditch effort to provide a home for a collection of wild animals which had been used in the making of documentary films about tropical forests. That's a hot dog. You like hot dogs? Most of the larger animals here at the zoo have their own name. Here we have Fugo the tapir. This tapirillo bardi, or commonly known as the tapir, is Belize's national animal. And a healthy tapir can reach the weight of 600 pounds, especially eating hot dogs. And here we have a jaguar called Junior Buddy. Today, the Belize Zoo and Tropical Education Center is settled upon 29 acres of tropical savanna and exhibits over 170 animals, representing over 45 species, all native to Belize. The zoo keeps animals which were orphaned, rescued, born at the zoo, rehabilitated animals, or sent to the Belize Zoo as donations from other zoological institutions. The Belize Zoo has become the first nature destination in Belize that is fully accessible to visitors with physical disabilities. Right up there and snap your head right off. Quicker than you can say. Ouch. He's breathing. Belize Zoo and Tropical Education Center receives over 65,000 visitors annually. And this eagle is called. Happy Panama. By one recent account, Belize supports 543 species of birds. It's later on in the afternoon, 
and we thought we would leave this tranquil tropical jungle zoo and drive to our next hotel in Belmopan, the capital of Belize. It's about 25 miles south of us on the Western Highway. Once there, we will be visiting a couple other Mayan ruins called Zunantunish and Caracol. So join us for part three and thank you for viewing.